guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I love talking about books. And in today's video, I will be talking about all the books I read in March. And not to like brag or anything, but I think I just had like the best reading month ever. Like truly nothing can like ever top that. I don't, I don't think. And I'm a little bit scared for that because I'm like, <laughs> I'm scared for April to come. But let's talk about the books I've read in March. Which is this whole beautiful stack of books. And I think it's amazing. And there are also some audiobooks in there. So that's exciting. And yeah. Basically if you want to know how my reading month went. I can just tell you that the average rating of my books this month was 4.3. 4.3. I had one or two three star books. Nothing lower. And I had five. Five guys. Five. Five star reads. <laughs> Couldn't be happy about it. Equally, it was a very emotional reading month because I was crying a lot. Because a lot of these books were very sad. So, yeah, I'm very excited to dive in and talk about these beautiful, amazing, stunning books. And I also put out two reading vlogs that I'm going to drop later, but really recommend watching these because I had the best time and I really put in a lot of effort for them so go watch if you want like more details on how I read them kind of but yeah in total I read 12 books yeah it's like I've read a lot more than usually like number wise I'm not but like audiobooks versus physical books like I've read I think around 10 physical books which is wow like stunning so I'm very excited about that also guys, let me know what your favourite book of this month was because I would love to know and chat about all the books I will be talking about next because I feel like there are going to be a lot of opinions about some of these books. So, let them leave them down below. Thank you. So let's just begin in the beginning of the month, March. And I read the Percy Jackson and the... La Battle of the Labyrinth, which is this one. This is the fourth book, and it was very fun. It was kind of taking place in, like, underworld, but not in the underworld, you know, but, like, under the world, because it was, like, in this labyrinth, and they had to do, like, funny little quests, and it was, the romance was starting to pick up, but it was so fun, the friendship of it all, and I just really enjoyed it, and it was a fun, 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 fun time, yeah, it was it was really leading up to the big last book of Percy Jackson. I later in the month, but I'm just gonna name it now because why not? I read Percy Jackson, the last Olympian, which is the last book. So I finished Percy Jackson, the whole series, except now there are like five more series to read. So I'm very excited to read those. But I finished the first one, which feels really good. And I really enjoyed this one. I actually gave it five stars just because it was a great ending to a great series. And I still think about these characters. It's on my TikTok. I love the TV show. I've watched it so many times. I am fully like in the Percy Jackson hype now. I know. I know. I'm very late. It's actually embarrassingly late. But better here, better now than never, right? At least that's what I'm trying to tell myself. But yeah, I enjoyed this book so much. It was so fun. But very emotionally because... It's the last book, and I didn't think that, but people were dying, and it was very sad, but very crazy. And it also took place in New York, which I love. Like, they were fighting in Central Park, and then down Midtown, and it was so fun. But so great. Like, East River God, Hudson River God, I, I don't know. It was just, it was just amazing, so. First five star, but it wasn't the first, because I read it in the end of the month, but you know. Then I listened to an audiobook, and that was Dear Dolly by um, Dolly Alderton, um, which is basically um, a summary of, like, essays that, like, people were writing into her, and, um, like, letters, like, give me advice on my boyfriend, she told me something like that, and she was giving advice, and then she was, like, you know, talking quite a few of them, and it was very interesting. There were so many broad topics, like friendship, relationships, living in your 20s it was really good and i really enjoyed it it was helpful it was fun it was entertaining english accent i really enjoy her non-fiction books i haven't read a fiction book by the dolly alderton but i really want to so 
I'm excited. But yeah, I gave that one 3.75 stars. But it was very good. Then I read Better Than the Movies for my swapping screen time with reading time reading one, which was super fun. And I put that book off for such a long time, but I finally read it and it was really fun. It was so entertaining. It was a bit emotionally because her mom died, so I think that was like the emotional component to it all. And it was high school, it was YA, it was a fun romance, and I really just enjoyed it. It was really good, and I can see why people like it, and I'm so excited that there's going to be another book coming from them, like, in college, and I think it's going to be so good. This was my third Lynn Pater book, and definitely my favourite so far. But I'm excited to be betting on you very soon, hopefully, in April. Um, now, let's talk about the series that probably took up most of my time in March. But equally, I read it so quickly, so that's probably not even true, but, you know. And that was... Magnolia Parks. Ah, I'm so happy I read them. Just for, like, the mental thinking that you need to read them because everybody else is reading them, you're so far behind. And then because I really enjoyed them, and then because they're so great and I can't stop thinking about them, and, like, it opened up a whole new can of worms on my TikTok, so... It's just been very fun. I can finally understand when people are like, I'm a Julian girly, because same girl. And yeah, <laughs> I didn't read them like consecutively after each other, because I don't think that would be good, because then it's just over way sooner than it actually is. I mean, it already is over <sighs> too soon. But yeah, I read The Long Way Home. It was very, very skeptical going into this, but I'm so glad I read that, because... It might be one of my favourites from the series. It was just so fun seeing Magnolia and Julian together, honestly. I'm sorry. Don't come for me, please. I love BJ. I love him. But, like, it was just so fun, you know, as a side plot. And seeing Magnolia and BJ, like, evolve and stuff like that. It was just really fun and sad at the same time. That's, like, what I would describe Magnolia Pox. The whole series. Fun and sad at the same time. Because Magnolia is just so funny, so... Yeah, but I really enjoyed this one and I couldn't put it down. I read it so quickly, such a big book and I read it so quickly. So it really surprised me, but I loved it, like I said. And I gave that one five stars. Um, then we got The Days of Grand Dream, Julian. Loved it. Probably my favourite because I love Julian. I'm a Magnolia Pugs girly. But Julian is my favorite boy, so I don't know. But I love BJ and McMurray together, like, don't get me wrong. They are, you know, it. Obviously. Like, I don't think anybody like, questions that. But this was so fun and good to see it out of Julian's PV. I care about gays in Christian too, but like, I wish Julian would have gotten his own book. And I'm very scared because I heard some people talk about that, like, there's this theory that he's gonna die in the next day he hates, and I'm like, uh, I don't know what I would do. I really truly don't know. But yeah, um, this was also really good. Seeing it out of Julian's POV, I just loved it. And um, Magnolia being the Lulu is so funny. And it just, it's been a really good time. And the quotes were really good. And I, again, read that book so dang quickly. And then... We got the queen of the um, we got the queen of the show. I mean, the cover is already just like stunning and gorgeous and everything. And this one was just so sad. It was just so sad, and not in like terms of like, oh, that's one sad thing that happened. No, it was just the whole book had an undertone of sadness in it because of the thing that happened in the long way home at the end. Which, when I first read the long way home, I did, I thought that like didn't happen. Like I thought. No, I didn't believe it. And so I started this book fully like, it's gonna be fine. No, it wasn't fine. It really truly wasn't. <laughs> so that was a little bit upsetting, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was definitely my nerve, like, was the funniest in this one, which was kind of like, you know, it was the saddest, but it also was the funniest, so, you know. But I really enjoyed it. It was such a good book, and I'm so sad that, like, their storyline is over, and... Yeah, that's all I can say. <coughs> wanna like, sorry, I'm sick. If you haven't heard that yet, I'm sick. I don't wanna like spoil anything, but I'm just really, really 
loved it. It was so good. And I'm so sad it's over. Quite a lot of five stars. So let's get into my lowest writer book of the month. Because, yeah, she was a disappointment to say the least. And that was The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. Because I loved Abby Jimenez's books and I was so excited to read this. And then it just... I don't know. It just felt a little bit boring. It felt very repetitive because they had such big communication issues. I feel like if the girl would have just said what was going on, the book could have been 200 pages. And so just like, I feel like we read her thoughts over and over again and they were always the same. So I was just like skipping pages because nothing new was happening. So I really didn't enjoy it, but it was very emotionally at the end, which I don't know if that was like necessary. It's like, surely you're not going to do that just for the sake of another book. And the author did it. So I don't, I didn't love that. It just felt a little bit unnecessary. So I'm like, I'm giving it three stars, but I'm just giving it three stars for like the writing, not the plot and not the characters because the guy, he was great. He was great, but he did hunt. And a few things of him was just giving me the red vibes, you know, rubber band again. And I'm like, no, no. He was like, I want guns. And I'm like, I'm from Germany. This is like so far of what I'm used to like thinking and that's probably more common around Americans. I mean, he is, you know, American. So I shouldn't be judging, but I, I read that and I was like, mm, ick, 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 ick. So that didn't help the situation, I would say, but it was fun to see where Abby Hammond came from because then I read The Worst Wingman Ever, which is like this funny short little short story for my Kindle. It's free if you're a Kindle Unlimited. And if you have it, I would definitely recommend it because I gave that one four stars. And it was 60 pages long, but it was so good. I wish there would have been more. I need more of them. Please let them be more. They had such a good like start of their relationship, kind of like exchanging notes. And it was so emotional because she was a nurse for her dying grandma, like a hospice nurse. And that was just so sad. And he was just so good and yeah that made me honestly more excited about her new book coming up than the friend zone but i'm still very excited so it's okay okay then i listened to another audiobook and that was wrong time wrong place um which was honestly great honestly great it was such a good audiobook and it is a thriller of a mom looking out the window and seeing her son stab a guy randomly he just stabbed him and then she goes to bed and she's like ah my son killed somebody he's such a small child still only 18 and then she wakes up the day before and she's like uh sorry one and then she goes even more behind in the timeline to try to figure out what led up to him killing the guy so that was really interesting and didn't see most of the plot was coming i don't think and i love the accident so i had no complaints and i'm gonna give that one four stars as well because <laughs> we're on a roll that was the only audiobooks that i listened to um so that's not good because i had two more on my libby and i lost them both because i didn't listen to them one time i was in the middle of one so that was very upsetting to say the least but whatever it's fine i'm just gonna listen to that in a few months feeling great about that anyways Next book I read was actually a book I started in February and now finished. But I'm pretending I'm not done. I'm just pretending I'm stuck around here. Because I read The Winners and the tears are coming to my eyes. It's not even funny. It's like I, I'm i starting to tear up. So that's not good. This book is the final book in the Baritone series. And if you read Baritone and As Against You, you know where the story ends so that's all I'm gonna say but it was a really good book I don't think it was my favorite out of the whole three books it's because the beginning felt super slow and very like come on like why is it so long but I still really enjoyed it and I'm gonna obviously give it five stars I could not give it five stars it's just so good and the ending broke me when I'm telling you it broke me I mean it, it broke me like none other, you just like, psh. So that's been very fun and entertaining. 
And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Just be away before reading, because it's very sad and dramatic, but I would definitely recommend it. It's my favorite series of all time, so I loved it. And I finished it a couple of days ago, and I got the audiobook from my Libby, and every night I just listen to the most fun chapters to pretend that that's where it ended and not here. I can't, I will not, I don't think I will ever get over this book. So that's on that. And then the last book that I read for video, and that will gonna come out later, so I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it was like not me choosing the book, so it was very fun when I got the book, because it's been on my mind, but I didn't like, I, I wasn't gonna read it. And that was Radio Silence, and I was a little bit skeptical because it's why a lit fake general fiction, I don't know book about a teenager doing a podcast and being friends with somebody and just very random I felt like but honestly this book is about so much more than just a podcast it's about friendship it's about mental health it's about growing up deciding what to do with your life going to university or not what you should do with your life if it's important to go to university all those kind of things and it was just so good and I would definitely recommend and really made me think about my life decisions going to university and stuff so yeah but that's my only personal issue that I need to work out so I would really recommend it. and it's just so relatable like Alice Osman really gets how young people think I think so that was really good and I love being back in the hot stuff of the world after life so yeah so yeah these are all the books I've read I hope you enjoyed this video I hope I see you on the next one, which is probably going to be my March DBR, and then I'm moving. Yeah, anyways, I'm very excited. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy it, and let me know all your thoughts on all these books, obviously. And yeah. But yeah, I hope I see you in the next video, and goodbye! Bye guys, love ya, love ya, you're important, and never forget that, and to all these books, and I hope I see you next one, bye!